House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is campaigning for the Republican Party to take back the House this November in public and behind the scenes. A new piece in The Washington Post claims that McCarthy is surrounded by a, quote, political machine that has swayed the GOP field. Part of that machine is a secretive fundraising effort backed by McCarthy and his allies to weed out extremist candidates who could jeopardize his future as House Speaker. However, he might be underestimating the far right's influence in the Republican Party, possibly crushing his dreams to hold the Speaker's gavel. Joining me now, Stuart Stevens, senior advisor to the Lincoln Project and author of It Was All a Lie, How the Republican Party Became Donald Trump, and Tara Setmeyer, former Republican Congressional Communications Director and senior advisor to the Lincoln Project. Stuart, I'm starting with you, because the Washington Post piece frames McCarthy as this political animal with a strong grip on his party. But does he really? And what do you think of his chances of becoming speaker if the Republicans retake the House? I kind of like your chances better, Jonathan. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think, because, um, you know, you don't have to be a member of the House to be speaker, by the way. Uh, so you oh. do have a shot. It's, okay. um, listen, I think this is a fantasy. I think what's playing out here is something that's played out throughout this Trump era, where establishment Republicans who know better are trying to control this radical element that they have now empowered, and they think that they can control it. They think they can ride the tiger. Um, it, it, it won't work. I mean, look, when McCarthy announced this, you know, so-called new program they were going to do, or platform, who was right over his left shoulder, you know? Um, Marjorie, uh, three names. Um, and, 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 you know, she's a stark raving lunatic. Um, so you, you can't really negotiate with evil and craziness. How do you meet that halfway? And I think that's what, what uh, McCarthy's doing. It's the same mm -hmm. thing that, that's happening with, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Senate. Um, you, you can't negotiate with people who don't believe we have a legally elected president, who believe that America is in a democracy, and then asked to be in a head right. of a democratic process. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and Marjorie, three names is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Tara, the Freedom Caucus ha hasn't come out in support of McCarthy, but they have yet to put forward a rival for speaker of their own. Political reports that the caucus is more likely to exert influence and, quote, use its re leverage to secure procedural demands, but not blow up the race for speaker. Now, Tara, you know where this is going, because, well, how about this? Let's go back to November 2021, when you first told me this. He thinks he's going to be the next Speaker of the House. <laughs> he's never Tara, going to be Speaker of the House, Jonathan. Jonathan. Kevin McCarthy never. Will... This guy is spineless. He's doing this because he thinks that if he continues to pledge fealty to Trump and to and mainstreaming the extremes of the party, that somehow these people are going to vote him in as Speaker. No, they're not. <laughs> so, Tara. That was almost a year ago, which is shocking to me. But is there a chance he could, McCarthy could become speaker, but without any real power within the party? I mean, he could. We could apply that to a lot of things. I could become <laughs> speaker of the House. I mean, my cat Tiki could become speaker of the House. It, look, I stand by my statements a year ago that Kevin McCarthy will never be speaker of the House. Um, it, you know, I shocked you when I said it could be Speaker Jim Jordan, for all we know. <sighs> um, Exactly. But here's the thing, and to Stewart's point, you know, Kevin McCarthy thinks that he's navigating this and he's been like so brilliantly, this brilliant tactician navigating the, the MAGA waters since he's been uh, on this quest to become speaker. It's, an, it's a doomed quest. Donald Trump cannot wait to humiliate Kevin McCarthy even further. Yes! We've seen this. He gets off yes. on the idea of Kevin McCarthy's fealty. When McCarthy went on the, on the floor of the House, just like McConnell did after January 6th, and they actually told, spoke the truth about how they felt about what was going on, they had a chance to off-ramp from Trump. And we, everyone thought, maybe this is it. What did he do? Two weeks later, he goes down to Mar-a-Lago and, mm -hmm. and bends the knee, gives him some, some dollar store trophy and smiles next to Trump. And he's continued now on to kiss Trump's ass, thinking that this is going to work. It's not. He's palling around so with Marjorie Taylor Greene when he introduced the contract. What is it called now? The commitment. commitment. 
the commitment. commitment to America. I, I'm old enough, as Stu is, to remember the contract with America oh, back in 1994. And that was actually a brilliant political tool that Republicans used to take back Congress because, after 40 years in the wilderness, because people still cared about governing. The party still cared about actually governing and so, passing laws. The, today's Republican Party doesn't care about that. So Kevin McCarthy right. is, is, this is an ill-fated uh, attempt, and he's, it's not going to work for him. And, and, and we've got less than a minute left, Stuart. But I was screaming when Tara said what she said, because I've, ever since Tara said that about McCarthy never becoming speaker, I've held on to that. And I see and I've been saying what she just said. Donald Trump cannot wait to humiliate Kevin McCarthy if Republicans retake the House and then he runs for the Senate. Do you agree with me and Tara? Yes. I mean, look, graciousness and Donald Trump uh, uh, are, are two foreign countries uh, that never meet. Uh, he will do whatever is the most petty and uh, cruel thing that he can do to inflict pain on someone he sees at a critical moment was not loyal to him. And that's mm -hmm. Kevin McCarthy.